Hi, this is Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Hi, this is Shaka Khan, and I want to welcome you to episode two of Khan Knows. For this episode, we're going to explore my journey towards professionalism, which started actually way before Rufus and before the 70s even. I professionally started singing much earlier, or not that much earlier, but somewhat earlier than 70, 70, 69, 70. Um, I was making money, uh, not much, allowance money, talk like that, when I worked at the Afro Arts Theater with a group called the Shades of Black when I was about 14, 13, 14. And uh, with my sister, myself, and two of our friends, we used to sing African songs. We did Mary Makiba, Levi Mabulu, and the likes. We used to sing all our songs, uh, of course, uh, phonetically, because we didn't know what we were saying. Except with Miriam's song, we did the, we did the, lion, the lion song. Hiya. And um, we know what that was about, of course, most people do. Um, I was with a band called the Afro, called the Pharaohs, at a uh, club on 39th and Pershing. That's down, that's down in, in the hood, um, in Chicago. And the Afro Arts Theater was where every weekend we would um, pretty much be the same people on the on the bill, <laughs> but it was a variety show that we had. And um, it was uh, Bobby Get Down Brown, uh, Shades of Black. Um, what's her name? There's this great dancer, I can't think of her name. Darlene Blackburn. Um, and the Pharaohs, which is an amazing man. Uh, Satterfield on bass, um, Handy, Charles Handy on sax. Um, just some great, great, great musicians. I can't think of all their names. I was a kid. I was a kid amongst giants, and um, it was a really, really, really fun show. So after that finished, that about two years sent, that's that would bring me up to the point. That's up to the point where I ran away from home at around 16. Um, lived in a commune. Um, found my father, who had, I hadn't seen in eight years found out that he moved to Ibiza and um, was a photographer there. But it was his pictures, the pictures that he brought back, that gave me the, the bug to travel. This is beautiful still life. I said, I have to see this with my own eyes. And of course, he, he was very supportive of that. Um, there was a point, I cannot give you a year, <laughs> but I must have been, it was before I joined Rufus. So I, I was between 16 and 18. Ike Turner flew me out to California. I stayed at the Jet Hotel, not far from his studios. Um, he auditioned me, he wanted to audition me to be one of the iCats. When I found out what the audition was about, I completely lost it. And I acted like a child and he sent me back home. <laughs> Um, <laughs> totally slipped my mind, just came back. Um, anyway, that also gave me a bug. I said, I got to get out of Chicago. I got to go. I got to go somewhere. And I got to gotta do my, to what I do. And so, so happened, um, I joined a, I joined a band called Life. And I don't know how we got this gig, because it's the hardest gig in Chicago to get, Rush Street. It was on the north side of Chicago. It was where the tourists would come. It was like maybe three or four blocks, with clubs, pubs, and the like. And there were clubs like Mothers, Lollies. Um, uh, I used to work at a place called Nero's Pit. And um, lots of people came to see us. Our work schedule was like um, we worked from 8 o'clock, 8.30, maybe 8, 8.30 to 
till three o'clock in the morning. And we did one hour shows with 20 minute breaks till from 8.30 till three o'clock in the morning. That's child slave labor. But I really wasn't supposed to be in a club anyway. They didn't know how old I was. They didn't check. But every night the guys had to carry me out to the car because it was, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it was cuckoo. But had I, had I not been there, um, I wouldn't have met Bob Monaco, who truly discovered Rufus on that same circuit and um, brought us back to Los Angeles to record. And so that actually takes care of the time, my time, my, my life, <laughs> uh, from, from the time I ran from home until the time I moved out here to California. Just now, there's one other little thing I did leave out, is that I was pregnant when uh, I did move out here to California. I was really small. I was the first time I came out here, I was pregnant. And then I came back home. Yeah, okay. The first time I came out, I was pregnant to meet with uh, ABC Dino Records when Bob Monaco saw the band. One of the guys at, uh, at the station, at the label, said, how are we gonna make a star out of you if you're gonna be having babies? I said, look, I'm not gonna say his name because I respect him too much. But I said, look, man, I'm gonna be what I'm gonna be with, without you, under you, over you, around you, or whatever. Okay, so get over it. So he shut up. I went home. On the way home, I thought that, um, you know, I had gas or something. <laughs> but I was like in labor. I got off the plane in California and that very same night, went to the hospital and my daughter. Uh, she was three months old. I got back on the plane with her and came to California. Um, and I found a place in Laurel Canyon. And uh, she, I, and a nanny named Sheila moved into this little house. And that's where the Rufus, the whole Rufus saga begins.